Welcome to the channel. So my name is Will and I am a Pickle Pro and this video is to talk about what I've learned from playing some of the best players so far in the country. So recently I played against Zane Nav Navratil. So Zane is one of the best singles players in the country. I actually played Zane in college for tennis and then because he lives in the area by chance I got to play Zane in Pickle Zane is patterns. So patterns are so important especially at a higher level. So I'm at the fiber level and Zane confirmed that is that as you get more and more advanced and especially play singles, you have to recognize the patterns of play better. And that's one thing that was so important that I, by the very first few games, we played Pajemini's game, we didn't, we didn't drill too much. In the future, means they may drill if I get a chance if he's not so busy, but um, we did a lot of kind of match play that day and crazy because the first few games, kind of a whitewash, he wasn't giving these full serves, he has a, an amazing kick kind of serve. You can do anything with it. And the first few games was, was about catching me off guard. I was hugging the kitchen line way too much. So when you hug the kitchen line too much, especially in singles, you can't intersect a volley, especially because you're trying to skate down, uh, to skate down this tightrope of the kitchen line, rather than hanging back an extra foot and trying to cut that volley off at the, at the line, the kitchen line. So giving yourself more space to cut the angle off rather than being at a 45 and trying to cover more ground, which was impossible. And I, learned, and I didn't realize that until you know, playing with Zane, that happened when I played against Jada Villas. So I played against Jada Villas in Chicago, again, singles, and that's the thing that would get me regularly in trouble. I'd storm the kitchen line, try and hug that line, get in as fast as I can, like a tennis, you're doing doubles in tennis, but then I'd get passed down the line. I couldn't figure out how he was doing it, because it's, how am I, I'm doing everything right, I'm coming in, I'm doing what I'm meant to do, but it wasn't working. So then now playing with Zane, he, he gave me the highlight of Will, Hold off a little bit. Give yourself a kind of like two feet back so you can really hug that kitchen line. Not hug it, but you can, you can defend the kitchen whilst not giving up too much space so you can cut the angle off. So again, those are the two huge learning curves that I've got from playing two of the best players in the country. Just from that playing, just from losing, but still learning a lot from that. Another thing that I learned from playing these two higher players is serve and returning just like in tennis, well, my experience with playing Division One tennis is that it is important. Having a good serve is great, but also a, a controlled return. So when I was playing Zane, if I'm on a pickleball court, so this is my iPad here is a pickleball court. If I return anything center and would try to come in, I'd be out of position because it exposed the angle and it ripped me either down line or cross court. Zane has a really good two-hander that he rips around an angle, which is unexpected. You wouldn't think a two-hander would have that kind of angle, but he does. So with your return being in the, in, the kind of in the center of the court, the kind of middle part here, it got you me, me in a lot of trouble. But when I started to play more productive pickleball, what I was doing is I was finding myself, again, this is the kitchen line halfway through, if I would find myself returning both deep into the back corner and width, I could take over that, the, the, the control of the point. Remember Zane plays every day, and I am that's learning to get better and doing, doing more and more to try and do the same thing he's doing. And as soon as I start to have more control of those rallies from those returns, super important. One really cheap little thing that I learned is that you don't have to return very fast. As long as you return with height and with depth, again, they can't volley it still. And that's one thing that I was beginning to say, I was trying to rip the return when you don't need to rip the return per se. You can hit the ball high and deep, and that gives you more time. Because if you remember, the ball's higher. As the ball's traveling up, I'm ghosting into the kitchen line, my, my two feet behind the kitchen line. By the time the ball's dropped, I can start to dictate patterns, which was really interesting. I never thought that would be a, a big deal. I thought, you know, a big return would be effective for my tennis game. It's not. Actually, if you have control of the return, actually have the height and you have more time, you can start to react more. And it's the same in doubles. Now, if you have a higher, deeper return, it doesn't have to be big. They can't volley it, remember, because of the bounce-bounce rule. If it's deeper, it's way more effective. And you don't have to take the ball with much risk as well. That's a good thing. You want to be in the rally quickly rather than risky by going for a big ball. And my final takeaway from playing both Jay and now with playing Zane now, that kind of experience right away, is that I have had a 200 return for as long as I can remember playing pickleball because I thought it was better. But in my tennis career, remember I've played 20, 20 years now to have tennis. I've played Division One, I've played ITFs, I've played everything that you could possibly play apart from getting on the Challenger circuit. And I have a wonder backhand, it's my better side. And Zane, 
amazingly said, well, if I could teach you from the ground up, it wouldn't be a two-hander. I have a two-hander because it's something I'm used to and I've done. If you can use your one-hander and develop it, you'd be amazed how much more versatility it has on the pickleball court, which is interesting because when we started to, to drill cross-court deep, my one-hander, even though it's, I've got a very confident one-hander in tennis, you can see that on some of my um, other videos that you'll see from my other channel, my tennis channel, is that a very confident one to back end, but I haven't adapted to pickleball just yet. But once I started to do more of it, I was becoming very confident in that swing in a very short period of time, because it's something I know. So if you're a tennis player trying to play pickleball and you're trying to go for the two-handed, like I was still two-handed dink, just for the small stuff, it's easy to control that left hand. But if you were turning or you're going for a kind of passing shot, the one-hander is actually more versatile. And it even comes from Zeng's mouth himself, which is awesome. So if you like this kind of content and you want to see more of these kind of me chucking into the, into the camera about what I'm learning, we subscribe. We've got a couple of subscribers and I want to keep building this. I am going to be playing a tournament in February. I'm playing a PPA or is it a, no, a, 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 a PP in Minnesota. I'm going to play singles. I'm going to be vlogging that. I'm going to be trying to see what's going on and trying to show you guys the back end of what it is to play and give you more exposure. So then maybe one day you have the confidence to go out and play pickleball tournaments like I'm doing as well. So if you got that, subscribe below, give us a like, and I'll see you guys in the near future. Thanks. Bye.